All right, so I think today's episode is gonna be a little bit fun because ah, it's just one of those things where I spotted a marketing mistake, a selling, a persuasion mistake out in the wild with somebody's cold email uh, pitching me. And, you know, I, I got frustrated about it in, in the moment, but also I recognize that it's a great learning opportunity for what to do wrong because they, ah, it was a big failure at cold email. And um, it's not, it's not, the normal failure that I see at cold email, the normal failure that I see is just a incredibly generic cold email pitch where it's obviously like somebody that just copied and pastes their message into every single, um, into every single prospect, right? And they're sending the exact same message over and over again. Well, this person, they tried to do something different, but uh, ultimately it was still, uh, it was still a, big failure and probably even worse than that generic cold email. So with that, and by the way, I am going to share this with you here in my notes. So here's the number one thing that you need to know about cold email. Response rates to targeted and tailored pitches are almost always going to outperform generic pitches. So um, if you just pitch somebody generically, okay, uh, I sell these services, right? Versus I was looking at your business. Uh, I thought this particular aspect of it was interesting and it might mean that you would be a fit for what I do. I'd like to talk to you about maybe if you are a fit, right? That's a targeted and tailor tailored pitch uh, versus the generic pitch. So if you want response to your cold email, like I teach it as, as, as conversational cold emails, right? Um, I, I teach it as, hey, we initiate a conversation with someone to see if maybe they are a fit for the service. Um, but if you want response for your cold emailing, number one, don't do generic pitches. Number two, make sure you target and tailor your pitch to the people you're reaching out to. And, and there are ways to do generic that feel much more personal uh, that that maybe are not as targeted and tailored. We'll talk about the right ways to do cold email uh, before the end of this episode. But if you're going to do targeted and tailored pitches, meaning you're going to make your pitch about the person that you're reaching out to, you really don't want to screw it up, right? Uh, so target and tailor your pitch unless you're going to totally screw it up. What do I mean by that? Well, here is a terrible cold email pitch. So this is an email I got. Hi, Roy, shared this inquiry with you a few weeks back. Media outlets are still keen. Are you the best person to speak to about this? Our research teams shared your details with me. I'm a media researcher with a pay on results PR firm. Okay, so far, nothing bad. I found your business, BTMS Insiders, newsworthy because of your expertise in the IT industry. Um, okay. Your website content shows that you're up to date with the latest industry trends, such as cloud computing and cybersecurity. No, it doesn't. You're wrong. You're, you're completely wrong. No. Based on these trends, I'd like to share a media request with you. Additionally, I have other media requests that could be an even better fit for your business. Would you be interested in discussing them? Best regards, Alice. P.S. There's no upfront cost to you. I'm CCing someone from my team, so please reply all to help us stay organized. Yeah, if I was an expert in cloud computing and cybersecurity, this would not be that bad of a cold email pitch. Uh, the problem was the homework that they were trying to make it look like they did just was a failure, right? Here's the epic fail of this terrible email. You know, I, I, well, I guess I've already read it to you and I've been replying, but um, yeah, it's, I, I'm not, I'm not an expert at cloud computing and cy cybersecurity. Yes, I do have background in the IT industry. I worked as a sales and marketing person for an online publisher of IT training. You, if you search IT training on BTMS Insiders, there are a couple places where I specifically mention that, but there's nothing where I talk about cloud computing and cybersecurity, right? Um, it, it, this isn't even like a small inconsequential detail. They got the entire business focus, the entire industry wrong in this pitch. And so like, how am I to trust this person who's supposed to research media opportunities and reach out 
on my behalf to those media opportunities to have me represented in media, how am I supposed to trust this person? Right? Like it's not, it's not something that's, that I'm ever going to trust that person. In fact, I have this extreme level of mistrust for this person to the point that I wrote them an email and said, Hey, um, you know, number one, I'm not really looking for services like yours, but number two, and by the way, I hit reply all to CC that team member. Number two, I said like, this not, it's not, um, like I have an extreme level of mistrust for, somebody who is going to get this basic level of research wrong and call themselves a researcher. Um, furthermore, I believe that this was probably done by AI. It's done with some AI pitch customizer. And by the way, if you're using AI, this is the stuff that's going out. It's like, this is part of the whole thing where uh, today, I believe the best use of AI is as a tool to help humans like an assistant, but that has to be monitored and verified and needs to needs to be something that is closely supervised, right? Now, there are two ways to do cold email, right? Like I said, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of this conversational method of um, of doing outreach where you're just trying to initiate conversations with ideal prospects to the point where you can figure out if you are a fit. And I even have an entire system um, that I introduce in my Launch Your Client Business free mini course, which will be linked in the description, that includes doing cold email right as part of that. Um, but one way to do cold email right is with hyper-targeted, hyper-tailored um, messaging, right? Meaning, well, okay, so let me give you an example from the copywriting world. There are people who have, have taught this often where if you are a an email copywriter, for example, you might pick a client that you want to have as an email copywriting client and you might write three separate emails for the specific offers that they have in the marketplace or three emails for one offer, similar to emails that you've seen them sending out in the past. And you send that to them and you say, hey, you know, I'm interested in working with you as an email copywriter. I wrote these emails an as an example of my work. In fact, I'm going to let you use them, you know, with no obligation if you would like to use them. And um, if you are interested in working with me to write more emails for you, I would love to talk to you. So that's hyper-targeted, hyper-tailored. I had another one where I wrote the first, I don't know, 500 to 1,000 words of a sales letter that I thought would be particularly interesting for a potential client. And I got the business by writing, it's the headline and lead, right? I wrote the headline and lead for the sales letter and said, I, I would love to finish this for you and turn it into a sales letter for this product. Um, if you're interested, let me know. And that stuff works and it works really well and has a super, super, super high response rate and conversion rate. Not 100%. And you have to be good to pull it off. But uh, if you are good and you are putting it in front of an ideal targeted prospect, wow, that stuff works really well. The other way to do cold email right is just making sure it's targeted and it feels fairly personal. Now that can be personal about you. Like, hey, I wanted to get this off to you before I wrapped up my Thursday here. Um, I've been looking at your business and think that you might be nice to work with. Um, I, I offer email copywriting services. Uh, if, if you are open to talking to anybody about helping you write your emails, even if it's just overflow work, let me know, right? Like that's, that's a very quick email that you, might, um, that you might dash off that feels very personal and that should hopefully be targeted but that has no personalized elements at all. So nothing there to get wrong, right? And so if you're going to do that, it can still be generic, but it's still, but it's personal feeling, right? And both of those are great ways to do cold email, right? And they're far better than a generic pitch. And definitely all of the above are better than trying to do a tailored pitch and just getting it wrong. My call to action for you at the end of this episode, how can you use this? If you're doing cold email marketing, what are you going to apply uh, in your next send? Also, don't forget to like and subscribe so you get more content like this delivered to you. And a reminder, there is a link in the description to the Launch Your Client Business free mini course uh, where, and by the way, you can use this to relaunch your client business too. It's, it's all the right things that you need to do to have a successful client business, including 
going out there and proactively getting clients. I'm Roy for this Breakthrough Marketing Secrets, and I'll catch you again in the next episode. See you soon. Bye. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.